NBC Sports NFL analyst. He's also the co-host of Pro Football Talk Live. Of course, he's one of our favorite guests. Chris, how are you? I'm doing well, guys. How are you? Good to talk to you. Oh, we're doing you great. Well, Appreciate you making the time for us today because when you put out your quarterback rankings, like, you know, we, we kind of like sit up and pay attention because you've had this really strong track record of going against the grain at times and ranking these quarterbacks, and your rankings turn out to be a lot truer than most of the other people who are doing this for a living. So when you put Zach Wilson above Trevor Lawrence, you know, we really, we really wanted to know why. So, Chris, tell us why. Well, sure. And, you know, you know, it's, it's, again, I'm not, you know, doing this to, to buck trends or get clicks or do anything like that. I had Joe Burrow number one last year. I had Tyler Murray number one the year before that. You know, I did love Justin Herbert last year, and I said his ceiling was higher than Joe Burrow's. You know, but, but so I, that's what drives me crazy about the business. People think, like, oh, you're trying to be a shock jock. And I want to be like, no, no, I, I don't <laughs> give a damn about social media or anything like that. I want to be right. This, this is what I do. Um, and, you know, really, when it comes down to Zach Wilson, Trevor Lawrence, all that, I do want it to be known. I really like Trevor Lawrence. He's worthy of the number one pick. There's no doubt about that. And I expect him to be the number one pick. I do. With Urban Meyer down there in Jacksonville, I think he you know, fits that college system that I think Urban Meyer is going to run, and that makes sense, okay? But I do think Zach Wilson's the better player. He's the better player right now, and I think his potential is bigger too. I look at Zach Wilson, guys, and I just look at it and go, you know, he's Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen-ish and what he can do. He's a really pure thrower of the football. And when I say that, I mean, hey, all the, the 10-yard out routes, the 20-yard in cuts, when they're open, he stri- it's a strike every time. It's a perfect spiral. It's the perfect amount of pace or whatever he needs to throw the ball appropriately. And then off of that, where I'm really big on evaluating quarterbacks and things too is, all right, does he take advantage of what's there to be had? Oh, yes, he does. Okay, now. There's nothing there to be had. And what does he do? And that's to me where he is really special. He's got an incredibly quick release. He has an incredibly strong arm. He can throw the ball sidearm. He can jump off the ground, no feet on the ground, and throw 30-yard rifles down the middle of the field. He has all of that stuff. And his mobility and his athleticism is special to go along with it. He doesn't need a lot of room in the pocket to make big-time throws. And when he does get out of the pocket, it's not, he's not looking to run. It's like a Rodgers or Mahomes. He looks to get out of the pocket just to buy some time so he can throw a 20 or 30 yard laser somewhere. And then, okay, you know, there's seven guys in coverage and they're triple dog daring him. You know, then he'll take off and run and he can run and rip off 30, 40 yard runs at a time, too. So he's really got it all from me. He's the most pro-ready, maybe other than Mac Jones out of the group I look at. And to me, he's clearly the most talented quarterback in this draft. I, 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 you know, I said this yesterday. If anybody wants to watch my Chris Sims Unbuttoned podcast, I really break it down, mechanics. The six quarterbacks I did, I did an hour and a half podcast and really broke it down that way. And, you know, he's, he's, he has superstar written all over him, in my opinion. And, uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm in love with him, as you could say. I, I'd say there's a, there's a gap between him and Trevor Lawrence for me. Really? Wow. And so, Chris, what don't you like about Lawrence? Well, yeah, and, and again, I, Lawrence... Well, is, what are your concerns? Really, I'm not saying you don't yeah, like him, yeah, but no, what are I your concerns you. about Lawrence going to the next level? Yeah, definitely. Listen, I know that Zach Wilson, people will talk about oh, well, lack of competition and things like that. Listen, thrown into tight windows, thrown into coverage, that's the same at every level. He'll be able to adjust to, you know, guys being a little faster and bigger and doing those things. I mean, we see that all the time. I'd argue and go, hey, listen, there was no great defensive players in the Big 12 when Patrick Mahomes was going against them. You know, Terry Bradshaw, Phil Sims, Josh Allen, Joe Flacco, they played against all the crap universities of the world. They ended up okay in the NFL. Lawrence, again, love the talent. Size is a skill. He has a really good arm. He does. I don't look at it as like a great wow arm. There are some mechanical things where I look at it and I go, he's got to clean it up. He gets a lot done with 
just his pure God-given ability. And I do think there's things he can improve. But the one thing that I think jumped out to me as I continued to watch him, I went, man, you know, he misses more throws than I realized watching on TV over the last few years. Now, it doesn't matter at Clemson. He can miss a throw, and then the next play they hand it off to Travis Etienne, and he runs for 50 yards up the middle. Or they throw a screen to him. Or, you know, the game at times can be very easy for him, too. Clemson, other than when they play Alabama and Ohio State in the Final Four, is always clearly the best team on the football field. I mean, the ACC is nothing to write home about. I don't go, oh, my gosh, the ACC, you know, oh, it's the talent everywhere. I mean, it's Clemson. There was Notre Dame this year and North Carolina, who was okay, or a good team, but they didn't even play them. He does get a lot of easy throws, too. So that's the thing I look at. He's, he's really damn good. He's a very good athlete. He can throw with people around him and do that stuff. But he's just his arm is not ex, as explosive as Zach Wilson, and he's not as consistently on the money when things are clean as Zach Wilson is either. And I think that's, to me, the difference uh, between the two guys, at least in my opinion right now. Interesting. Chris Sims is joining us, of course, NBC Sports. The Unbuttoned Podcast, as he mentioned, is a must-listen. So, okay, if you're the Jets, because that was a lot of praise on Zach Wilson. I mean, that was yeah. really good, Chris. You really like this guy as a prospect and think he's going to be a great pro. If you're the Jets, though, is do, would you regret passing on Wilson? Like, how would you stack up Wilson against Darnold? I, I, I and, and you know I, I think we talked about this you know you, you know us three right maybe at the end of the year I, I'm a yeah. believer in Sam Darnold and I do think Fleur and Robert Sala want to do on the offensive side of the ball I do I still think he can be a, a, a successful NFL quarterback but no I lo- you know and I didn't expect to say this I don't go into pre go into the the, the draft process with preconceived notions but no if I'm the Jets and I'm that number two, and Chris Sims is the GM, you know, I expect Jacksonville to take Trevor Lawrence, and I'm sprinting to the podium to take Zach Wilson. I, I, to me, he is, again, you heard me say Mahomes, Rodgers-ish, all that type of stuff. He's the perfect, the absolute amazing, perfect fit for that offense. You know, with his ability and the power in his arm off the play-action pass. All the movement, the bootlegs and things, you see the Shanahan system and the LaFleur system. He can be, to me, everything Aaron Rodgers you're seeing doing up in Green Bay the last few years under under Matt LaFleur. I think he's the perfect fit, again, for this system that's going to be very similar to that with the New York Jets, and that's where you know I love the combination. All right, Chris, do you like Wilson so much that you would end the pursuit of Watson? Uh, I would, I would certainly think about it. Yeah, it's a good question, Moose. I, I would. You know, what I worry about, of course, and I think we had this discussion too with Watson is, you know, the same thing Watson is going through right now. You know, any Jets fan has got to be out there looking at it, and going, "Hey, I, you know, we all love Deshaun Watson. He's one of the five best quarterbacks in football." But also, the Jets have damn holes all over their roster. They have so many needs. To where that's where I would just go. Okay, I mean, if if you want to trade away the number two pick and maybe Houston likes Zach Wilson and they want to do that, and you can get Deshaun Watson, who's certainly a proven commodity at this point, and you don't have to give up much to get him, then hey, maybe you think about it. But what I look at, and I think Joe Douglas from where he comes with the Eagles and the Ravens, such great. You know, draft history, especially like with the Ravens and that, I would just go, you know, I don't want to give up too many of these picks and things like that to get to Sean Watson when there's a damn gem of a player that I can have right at number two, and now I can use my rest of my picks to build the team and fill in some of the big holes that they have on their roster. So, yeah, that's I guess what I'm saying is I, I would. I would go to Zach Wilson and just say, hey, it's a new regime here. This guy fits our system. He's got special talents that are perfect for our system. Let's let's build around this guy. We got draft picks that are also going to be young, and we can really get a cohesive young unit and build something to where, you know, two, three, four years down the road, they're playing together all the time, and all of a sudden we look at the New York Jets and we go, damn, look at this offense and this team. It's young talent, and it's fun to watch, and 
were were extremely relevant in the AFC, you know, playoff picture. Chris Sims is our guest. You know, Chris, just sticking on Watson for a moment because you were also one of the first who believed that Deshaun Watson would sit out this year, and and that's yeah. how that's how much he does not want to play for the Houston Texans. You know, still feeling that way, I, I would assume. And do you now feel like he will be traded before the draft? I, I would think so. You know, I mean, what if, you know, I would worry about Houston and just like, you know, don't let too many of these positions get filled and and end up you know, handicapping yourself to now you've lost a few people to bid against each other to trade for Deshaun Watson. Um, and, and yeah, thank you, Maggie. But, you know, I know, I know. And, and I think Jalen Ramsey just said something, too, that I saw, you know, he on did. social media, or whatever, right, where he just said Watson's yep. serious. He doesn't want to. I, I was told a few weeks ago by, by people I trust in the NFL that they like he is willing to sit out the year. He wants nothing to do with that franchise. That franchise has issues. Listen, JJ Watt is Captain America Johnny Goody two shoes. When he wants out of town, you know there's problems there. So uh, I, I I do expect him to be traded, and I just hope you know for the Texans' sake and a guy who I like in Nick Casario GM. I hope they're not too stubborn and don't hurt themselves in this process. You know, uh, Chris, one more back to the draft, because the other thing, besides having Wilson ahead of Lawrence, you have Fields, number five. Why the dip in Justin Fields, um, who, you know, coming out of Ohio State, flashed against Clemson in that semifinal game where everyone's celebrating all over the country. But what's the concerns about Fields out of Ohio State? Sure. I I, I like Justin Fields. There are some big-time elite traits. He's he's a first-round quarterback for me all the way. I do think he his running is special. He's built like a Greek god. He's built like Cam Newton, except he's two inches shorter. So, you know, you will be able to have the flexibility to play a certain way early in his career to where you're not going to have to depend on him throwing the ball and dissecting you that way. And that's really what my concern is. Listen, the NFL, hey, you look at the Final Four in the NFL last year. It's the best pocket passers, the best passers in the game. That's still what it's all about. It's Mahomes and Rodgers and Brady and Josh Allen. Those guys can make any throw on the field, read coverages, and other than Tom Brady, the other three can you know make plays off schedule and do those things and get out of the pocket. Brady's not like that. It never really was. He's more of in-the-pocket type. But Fields, Moose, what, what, what scares me is, again, big-time talent around him. He throws to a lot of open spaces on the field. Guys are wide open. He does not always take advantage, full advantage of what they are to be had. You know, I can turn on the film a few times and go, listen, this should be a 70-yard walk-in touchdown, but it's a 50-yard completion because he didn't quite throw the ball the right way, and the guy had to fall to the ground and catch it, right? He's the worst short ball thrower out of the six quarterbacks I saw. And he's a, to this point, is a one-read, if that guy's not open, he's going to look to run and – he has moments of being careless with the football when the first guy's not open either. Let alone, I think my other concern, and he has a big-time arm, when he pieces it all together, you go, holy crap, that's got a vapor trail on it. Like, look at that throw. Yeah. But there's too many throws when it goes bad to where I go, oh, my gosh. I mean, he missed a 10-yard out by 10 yards. It's it, the guy has a 40-inch vertical, and he can't jump up and catch it. It's a six-yard shallow cross, and the, the guy can't even get a hand on it. He has a what I would call a floppy arm. It's a very floppy. I like a golfer who really reaches back to swing hard, right? You go, yeah. whoa, he can hit it 350 down the middle. But the next hole you get on, you go, well, he hit a 280, and now we're three fairways over, and <laughs> uh-oh, like, what are we going to do? And there is some mechanical issues with his feet and his arm that when it falls apart, it really falls apart, and that's what scares me a little bit. I still think he can be successful. I like him, but those are the issues that you know scare me a little bit. Chris, maybe you can, maybe you can't. Just curious about Wilson. You did a great breakdown, and the podcast is fantastic. Love it. Um, personality wise, we've yeah. heard you know a lot of reports. Um, so a bad guy, rich kid, all these different things. Some conflicting that. What about Zach Wilson, the personality? Um, what do you hear about what he is as a teammate? 
leader, right. being the face of a franchise, uh, be some have described him as a polarizing personality. Yeah, well, you know, I, I do see some cockiness and flashiness to him. You know, uh, I, I I look at his team though, and how they react when I watch film, and it, it looks like they like him a lot when I see him making unbelievable throws and unbelievable plays. You know, BYU is a little bit of a different place, guys. You know, there's yeah. like 27 year old players on the team who, <laughs> and 26 year old guys on the team. So it's a little bit weird that way. Um, uh, Moose, at, the first thing I want to say is, listen, I can only evaluate what I see on the field. Right. You know, it's going to be up to those and guys. But what I do know, and from a few people I do trust, is that, you know, this guy's got, you know, some pizzazz about him. And he's very accountable to take on his mistakes. And he is really willing to work on his craft. Like, listen, if you, if you haven't read it, like the Football Morning in America by Peter King. Uh, this past Monday. I mean, the guy was driving 10 yes, hours or yeah. eight hours <laughs> on Fridays to go work with John Beck and get better at his crap. So to me, at the end of the day, listen, we're not here to be, a, you know, as Bill Parcells used to say to my dad, a cruise ship, you know, party organizer here. We, we, want, <laughs> we want battleship commanders. Not everybody's, you know, I was there up in New England and Tom Brady. You know, not everybody was like, oh, Tom's awesome. I love him. He's the greatest guy in the world. You know, because he was demanding. He got to do this. We got to be better at that. And so guys, they're going to think you're a pain in the butt sometimes. You know about that with Peyton Manning, too. So I don't get too much caught up into that. Hey, okay. last year it was Justin Herbert. He's a hometown guy. He's never been out of the bubble. Well, he got out of the bubble, and the bubble exploded, and he's pretty damn awesome. So I don't go too deep into that stuff. Yeah, well, the only person who's allowed to run the party cruise is Gronk. We all know that. Um, <laughs> Chris, <right. laughs> literally one minute because I, we were against it, but I know, yeah. obviously, you know, your love of the Giants and, and sentimental, but you're always willing to look at them, you know, realistically also and, and be as objective as you can. You know, is it imperative that the Giants – do what they can to try to get an elite playmaker in free agency, or can they solve that through the draft? I think, you know, th th I think there'll be both avenues there, you know, for, for where they're picking and everything like that. I, I think they're going to have those options. I would like to see them get, yeah, one more piece, certainly. It's a big year for Daniel Jones. It really is. It's a make-or-break year for Daniel Jones, for, in my opinion, in a lot of ways. You know, I love Slayton. We know Evan Ingram has great talent. It's all over the place at times. I wish he'd catch the ball better and all that. Saquon's going to be back. But, yes, I do think they could use, you know, one more guy that can command some attention and do all that if they want to try to make this Daniel Jones thing work. Uh, yeah, I think they do need to add one more weapon to the, the arsenal. Chris Sims. Hey, Chris, we appreciate the time. Great 20 minutes and fantastic and uh, continued success. All right, Chris? Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Be good. We'll